Neuroanatomy. When I'm studying neuroanatomy, one of the things I struggle with most is with the words. Sounds kind of important. The terminology, sometimes there are words that, like different words that mean the same thing, and I have to work out what these words mean to understand what the author's talking about so that I can progress. So today we're going to talk about some very basic terms, rostral, caudal, dorsal, ventral and describe what they mean. And they're also important to the embryologist, which is more my home territory. Right, well, the rest of the human body, when we're talking about anatomy, superior is towards the top, inferior is towards the bottom, anterior is towards the front, posterior is towards the back. In neuroanatomy, in the anatomy of other animals, in um, embryology, we often use the terms rostral, caudal, ventral, dorsal. They almost mean the same thing, almost, but not quite. So rostral is from the Latin word meaning beak, so a bird's beak, so you can, you can use your nose as your beak. Uh, caudal means uh, tail. So caudal is towards the tail, rostral is towards the beak. Uh, ventral comes from the Latin venter, meaning belly, so it's on the belly side, and dorsal on, is the back, on the back. So ventral and dorsal, we can interchange and do interchange with anterior and posterior much more commonly than we do rostral and caudal. Rostral and caudal mean something slightly different. Here's a fish, <laughs> a 3D printed fish. Now the fish, so we can see pretty much, you know, the vertebrae. We have an idea of the, the vertebrae and the head and the tail. So this is the fish's beak, its rostral end, and this is its tail, its caudal end. Goes the whole way, doesn't have limbs coming off it. The vertebrae is running, you know, the length of the, the fish pretty much. And inside there is the spinal cord and its eyes are facing forward. So it's its central nervous system is in, a, is in a straight line. So if we were describe, describing the parts of the fish's central nervous system, we would say that the brain is rostral and the spinal cord is caudal, right? And this applies to lots of animals, even the ones with limbs. Look at the horse, the vertebral column, the head continues, the eyes are looking forward-ish, you know. The eyes are to the side because they're a prey animal, but you know what I mean? Everything's in a straight line. The spinal cord, the brain, the eyes, it's all in a straight line and it has a tail end and a, a beak end, a nose end. And if you look at the dog, you see the same thing, the, the tail, the back, you know, the vertebral column, the spinal cord, the head, the eyes, they're all in a straight line. If you look at a snake, no limbs, but you've got a very long vertebral column, you've got a uh, spinal cord in there and the brain and the eyes, they're all in a straight line. But what about humans? We don't do that. If we were, if we had our brain and our eyes in a straight line, we'd be something like that, wouldn't we? We kind of do it because the human brain, the human central nervous system starts off as a tube and then it folds at 90 degrees anteriorly because we're bipedal. We stand up. Uh, our vertebral column is running in this direction, but our brain is pointing in this direction. Our eyes are looking in this direction. We have a 90 degree fold. So if we keep the rostral caudal rules of the other animals and we apply them to us, this is our beak, this is rostral, and our, we have to follow that nervous system around that 90 degree bend down to the tail. Look, here's the human brain. This is anterior. This is posterior, superior, and inferior. There's the brainstem. There is our angle change there. So, um, not only is this anterior, but this is closest to the beak. So this is rostral. The frontal lobes of the brain are rostral. And if we follow the central nervous system along its length, that means the occipital lobes are, are caudal because they're towards the tail. Does that make sense? The frontal lobes are rostral because they're towards the beak. The occipital lobes are caudal. 
So if we were to use that rule with the brainstem, pons and medulla, the pons is rostral to the medulla because it's towards the beak. The medulla oblongata is caudal to the pons because it is towards the tail. You've got to think of that entire central nervous system, spinal cord and brain. Add on ventral and dorsal. Ventral, dorsal, but we're making that curve, which means that if this is ventral, so if, if this is ventral, this is ventral. So if, if this is dorsal, this is dorsal up here because we've, we've gone around this 90 degree angle change. So the ventral surface, dorsal surface. And we do see some weird stuff going on with other bits of the body that have angle changes hands, feet. Okay, so um, we have to think about the, the tube as a whole. There's a tube that becomes the central nervous system, becomes the spinal cord in the brain. In most animals, it's a straight line. In humans, it takes a 90 degree bend. In the embryo then, so <laughs> it doesn't look very much like us at all, does it? But this is the head end and this is the tail end. There's already, look, there's already, there's already a fold there. This is the central nervous system. This is the early tube. Well, the neural tube has, it's already started to form some other structures, but look, it is folding over. Uh, so this would be the rostral end of the central nervous system. And this would be the caudal end of the central nervous system. So then to describe one part of the nervous system relative to another, this bit, would be caudal to this bit. This bit would be caudal to this bit and vice versa. So this is rostral to this bit. Now, if we grab a slightly later embryo, look how curved the embryo is. And I hope now you can see why dorsal ventral, caudal rostral are so much more useful when describing the anatomy of an embryo and the central nervous system than using superior, inferior, anterior, posterior. See how curved this is. I mean, could you really describe that as superior to what, this? But it's, this is rostral to this. Here's the tail, here's the tail is caudal here. You get my meaning and again, dorsal, ventral, but as we curve around, this is dorsal and this is ventral. If you think about the whole curve, it makes complete sense that that's dorsal, but you have to think about it a bit. That's it, trying to make some terms a little bit easier. All right, think of the central nervous system as a single tube in humans. It has folded at 90 degrees where we have the brain. Rostral is towards the beak end of the central nervous system. Caudal is towards the tail end of the central nervous system. And remember that fold when you're describing ventral and dorsal. Okay, um, neuroanatomy, it's hard. See you next week.